Thank you. I love the black and white. Yeah, I was going to do half half uh, white hair, but I thought it was a bit too drastic. So I went with No, no, I white. don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Well done on the film. You've you've given Corella a whole new whole new life. Um, but <laughs> considering there's no backstory for her, where, how do you go about first creating that story for her? I like. I know it's kind of amazing that there's no backstory other than they went to school together. Her and Anita. <laughs> um, I came when I came in. They'd done a beautiful job of like figuring out sort of the skeleton of this journey that she went on and and the turns that happen in the plot. Uh, the thing that I really wanted to work on with it was the tone. Um, and was lucky, we were lucky enough to get Tony McNamara to come in and write. And he'd, been, you know, he'd done the favorite with Emma Stone. And there was this sensibility that I love this dance between the humor and, and the drama that he can do in a beautiful way. And we've got these actors that are just so talented that they can do that dance effortlessly. Yeah. And you also, I mean, you're pretty well known for bringing out humanity in broken people. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, you do that here as well. I mean, she may be an evil genius, but she, she, she's got a vulnerability about her as well. I mean, how do you do that so effectively? Where, where did that kind of inspiration come from? I, I just love to like, you know, it's like, I, I sort of like to say it's like, you know, good people can do bad things. And it's, it's always a, a matter of your circumstances and your situation that make you make those choices. And I don't think it's ever black and white, not to have a pun in there. It's gray. And it's like, you, I think you can break it down and understand her journey. And I thought what was really fascinating, something that was laid into the script is that she's being punished for trying to stay true to who she is. And particularly in that time period, and it's very apropos now, but particularly back then in the 60s, it's like you had the color within the lines and everybody had to be a certain way. And she had this spirit about her and this way of seeing the world that they tried to squash. And then it manifested itself. And particularly, obviously, with the drama, the, the personal turmoil as well, it manifested itself in this way that she, be, you know, she figured out how to express herself and she got rewarded for it. And there are certain like, baggage that came along with that because of her journey. But she stayed true to herself. And I love that part of the story. And obviously, you've got both Emma Stone, who's fantastic as Cruella, and Emma Thompson as well, who's just as fabulous as well. And they're both fierce women in their own right. So, I mean, I could see themselves lose themselves in their characters. I can imagine you just sat back and let them go. <laughs> you know what? There I, much there? There, there's such, there's so, uh, there's such gracious actors and they're so talented. And it really, it's like everything they did was you know, amazing, but it would be just about calibrating because it's, they had this dance with each other. And it's it, the one thing that was really sort of the aha moment with the Baroness was that to play it very specific and nuanced and small had so much gravity. And Emma Thompson was so great with that, you know, where it would just be the arch of an eyebrow or the turn of an eye or the cock of a chin would have so much power or just the way she bit a cucumber, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, against Emma Stone, whose character was so gregarious and sort of full of energy. And that worked, that dynamic worked really well. So it was always just sort of making sure we got that. Yeah. And also, I mean, it's based in 70s London as well, which is, is brilliant. Because uh, it was a time of rebirth and rebellion as well. You exactly. Know, yeah. Which so well. suits, yeah, so suits the Corella's journey, you know, that she's part of that world. And it's like, it, it helps, it helps her on a journey in terms of her self-discovery, being able to be part of that anti-establishment punk movement that was happening yeah exactly and you know the fashion is is also you know a massive a character all, all of its own to be honest I mean how how much how important is the fashion as well as the story to you bringing this whole thing to life the fashion was probably the most stressful part of the film <laughs> I mean surprisingly I didn't expect it to be but Jenny did such an amazing job and she had so much to do. I mean, she had hundreds of costumes that she had to figure out, but that was the movie. And then she had designed fashion lines like for both Corella and the Baroness. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that was the part that stressed me out because I think as an audience, if you're watching and you don't buy, like we've set them up as these great fashion designers. And if you're not buying what they're selling, it's going to take us out of the film. So we put so much work and scrutiny into what those fashion lines were. And they had to feel like they were of the time, but still felt current and fresh. So yeah. that was, the, you know, it was a lot of brainstorming. 
All right, well, thank you very much for your time today. It's been wonderful. <laughs> short, but, short but nice. <laughs> yes, lovely to meet you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!